Happy Wednesday, hot news, whatever's going on right now. I'm Brett, we're gonna jump on into some stuff. Reese informed me right before filming that I have headphone hair, which means it's time to go bald again because I just don't like dealing with it. It's so much easier when you don't have hair, you don't have to worry about, oh, look, my headphone band that I was wearing because I was working has depressed my scalp. Speaking of depressed scalps, a lot of people might be a little sad about the PlayStation news that came out right after we released the episode of Hot News on Monday, which is that Sony's going to be indefinitely postponing the PlayStation 5 event that was supposed to take place tomorrow in order to let more important voices to be heard, which I can absolutely understand right now. Obviously, there's a lot going on in the world, but that doesn't mean that tech news stops. So let's go ahead and actually jump on into more tech news, which is Andy's Ryzen C7 smartphone SOC specifications have been listed. You want to know how fast their next gen phones are going to be? They're so fast. They're so flipping fast, boys. Clock speeds up to three gigahertz, eight cores, TSMC 5 nanometers, RDNA 2, four compute units at 700 megahertz, 45% faster than Qualcomm's fastest GPU, the first mobile GPU with real-time hardware accelerated ray tracing, variable rate shading, has 5G, four times 16-bit LP DDR5 at 2.75 gigahertz, UFS 3.1 support. It's all super speed, so fast, so good. Oh man, it's just fake completely fake. If you're seeing this posted anywhere out on the internet right now, this is more than likely completely made up. I know that the Tech Power Up article that I'm pulling from doesn't mention it at all, but if you do just a little bit of digging, plenty of sources are indicating that uh, AMD already signed a partnership with Samsung. Samsung has their own fab fabrication facilities. Why is this TSMC 5 nanometer? None of this makes sense. Also, when was the last time that ARM used the brand name ARM Cortex A55. According to Dr. Ian Cutris, it's been years, so the brand presentation is different. Therefore, what is this? They also misspelled the name of the artist that the mobile cores are supposed to be named after. So fake, 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 fake news. But what's real is AMD releasing a driver update for Big Navi over in Linux. Yes, my friends, this is how we get confirmation of Big Navi is from AMD directly, just releasing all of the things that we need over on Linux. They put it out for the AMD GPU GFX V10 underscore three, which the Navi 21 has already been seen with a code name of GFX 1030. So this is directly in line with that. And it comes with the new code name of Sienna Cichlid. So AMD saying directly that Sienna Cichlid is a GPU from AMD. So this is officially a GPU. The patch set adds support for it, including Power management, display, KFD, interrupts, GFX, multimedia, etc. The new register headers are really big, so I haven't sent them to the list. You can view the new patches, including the register headers on the following Git branch. Th that's basically the basics of what you need for a new, it includes power management, display, interrupts, GFX, multimedia. What does the GPU do? Those things. So this is a brand new GPU aligning with everything that we've seen from previous updates with regards to Navi 21. So it looks like big Navi is getting ready to drop. Hopefully, hopefully really freaking soon. If it's appearing that heavily detailed in the Linux patches with all of that support, maybe a couple months, maybe now, maybe they're doing backend testing in Linux right now and they needed this to happen so that they could actually get all the support that they need out there in the public. I don't know. I don't know. Big Navi, AMD, Sienna Cichlid, fun stuff. It's a fish. Keep hip hop. Keep pop anonymous. Damn you! You get me the easy ones. But what isn't fishy is AMD donating some seven petaflops of compute power to help fight COVID-19 with partnering with Penguin Computing. So they're gonna also be partnering with the New York University, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, and Rice University to help work with just COVID-19 research with tons of peta flops. You got all of them flops flopping around like a fish out of water. Maybe it's a little fishy. Had to bring it. Full, full circle. What's also fishy is Apple's pricing, but everybody already knew this. However, they decided, hey, 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 guess what? Hey, hey, we're gonna double the price on a few things. Hey, <laughs> you wanted to pay $100 for eight gigabytes of RAM? Guess what? Now you have to pay $200 if you're buying one of their MacBook Pro 2013, which actually isn't a MacBook Pro. It's just the regular MacBook. Can we be really honest? Their 13 inch are not pros. It's a quad core eighth gen processor. There's no, nothing pro about that. Pathetic. And it only has LPDDR3 memory. This is obviously, this is due to the fact that RAM pricing has gone up lately, but the fact that it's an even doubling, Apple, come on. 
But they're saying to themselves, hey, come on, we need money. We need the cash. No, I mean, the billions of dollars that they're sitting on doesn't matter. They need more, especially to invest in the $330 million that they're going to be potentially building in Taiwan for a micro LED factory so that they can produce their displays by themselves and they don't have to be dependent on anybody else. Apple vertically integrating freaking everything. So micro LED factory in Taiwan is likely with a $330 million investment. That's a lot of cash. And they also need to pay with this RAM upgrade doubling. The developer who found a major huge flaw in signing with Apple because it could basically compromise everybody's account who use sign in with Apple just because of the way that they did verification. It was bad. They, somebody sent in the bug reports. They paid him $100,000 because it was that serious and they fixed it. So don't have to worry about that. But if they let that through, how much else did they let through? And how much is everybody else gonna take from Google and their garbage crap with Stadia? How much do we have to endure with Stadia being bad? Well, Take-Two CEO, obviously behind Rockstar and Bethesda, big company, right? They came out and said, I think there was some overpromising on what technology could they could deliver and some consumer disappointment as a result. You think? You think? I'm so glad that somebody in the industry is just like, the hell Google, this isn't what you promise. Obviously, Red Dead Redemption 2 being a launch title, Doom Eternal being promised on launch when it came out, which has happened, and Take Two just being like, hmm, yeah, you guys kind of smattered the unicorn on this one. Not, not a good idea here anyways. But Google not just dropping the ball when it comes to Stadia, they're also dropping job offers that they had out to over 2,000 people who would have been part of contract companies that would have gone into the Google ecosystem. I actually worked for one of these companies right before I moved to South Africa doing search engine evaluation. We provided search engine algorithm comparison for Google, and yes, that happened. So they said that they're slowing our pace of hiring and investment and are not bringing on as many new starters as we had planned at the beginning of the year. So they are not moving forward to onboard the employees that the agencies had already recruited on behalf of them. So the job offers already went out and they're just saying no, which kind of sucks. Yikes. And the last little bit of Google news that we have is the Pixel 4a XL, which is not going to be released by Google, has seen a full render. Yes, somebody finding a full rendered version of the XL. Likely, they're not going to be able to sell it just because of competitive reasons. It doesn't make sense in the current climate. If this is going to sell for like $450, doesn't make a whole lot of sense next to the iPhone SE when the 4A is supposed to cost $350. It's a weird little setup, so they're not releasing it. But then also a couple of organizations talking about how they got in the 4A XL backplate that was supposed to be shipped with phones. We have one right here. It costs like 10 bucks on eBay. This is a phone that never will exist. And we just, we have the backplate. It, it was a thing that got sold. And what also is a thing is that coal is going the way of the dinosaur. Is that, is that appropriate? Coal isn't oil, but it's kind of the same idea. Anyways, after 135 years of coal being the dominant energy source in the United States, in 2019, all of the renewables topped our coal usage last year. This is after a decline that started in what appears to be 2008. So solar, wind, geothermal, biofuels, waste, wood, and hydro all combining to beat coal. So coal now under 50% of the US usage. No one renewable resource is better than coal, but coal isn't as prolific as it used to be, ending a 135 year streak of coal being just rampant in in our lives. And what's gonna become even more rampant in our lives is artificial intelligence. Did you know this? Artificially intelligently saying, don't do it, I'll kill you. I'm scared of those days. Anyways, you might remember OpenAI releasing their GPT-2 language model and having to release it in increments because it was too powerful. They were like, it could do too much wrong in the world. To which a lot of people were like, really? And then all, all, all AI like ethic advocates were like, yes. Show us the danger. Yes, let us know that it's bad. Well, turns out they didn't stop there. No, the dangerous GPT-2, too weak. That was based on 1.5 billion parameters. Guess what, GPT-3 
175 billion parameters, over 100 times more parameters being released. And the uh, it's a language model capable of achieving state-of-the-art results on a set of benchmarks and unique natural language processing tasks that range from language translation to generating news articles to answering SAT questions. Basically, words don't need to exist anymore because we got AIs making words. And you got AIs invading all of your spaces on the internet, including any Zoom calls you might have because they're not end-to-end -end encrypted. Well, if you're using the free version of Zoom, they will not ever be end-to-end -end encrypted with Zoom announcing that they're gonna only bring end-to-end -end encryption to the paid version, which kind of get, cause like it kind of costs money to, to like implement that. Anyways, they're saying that you have to pay for it in order to get end-to-end -end encryption. So yeah, nerds. Speaking of nerds, the UK, is apparently authorizing some media companies like Warner Brothers and Netflix to resume filming and television production in their sad little island. So it seems like the Batman and more appropriate to me, the Witcher series are gonna resume filming sometime soon. It's also been rumored that James Cameron is in like the 14 day mandatory quarantine in New Zealand to restart Avatar 2 filming so that it can be released next year. But honestly, if it never comes out, did the world really lose anything? And is the world going to lose anything when Bungie reveals the new Destiny 2 stuff on June 9th? I don't know. I don't know anything about Destiny 2. But apparently there's a new update that got leaked and everybody's kind of excited for it. But Bungie hasn't really done a great job since they left Activision. So the hype of everything for Destiny 2, as far as I'm aware, is almost anthem-like. But not as bad. Uh, just still sad. Still, a, this is pretty, it's pretty rough. What's also rough is VR horror. It takes a lot to not soil your mantis doing that. Well, Prey VR apparently got leaked in a retail listing. So people are expecting this game to potentially come out in VR, which could be cool. Could be cool. PSVR title, Prey. What's not gonna be cool and what I'm regretting is the upcoming Kingdom Hearts TV show that's supposed to be launching on Disney Plus. Apparently, according to rumors floating around right now, Will Smith and Angelina Jolie are supposed to be involved in the live action production of this, which I don't even understand how it'd be live action. Is it like live action, how The Lion King's live action, where it's not real animals, it's all still CG, but they can call it live action? Like, how do you get Donald with no pants on in real life? How does that work? Okay. And then if Sora is not actually played by Haley Joel Osment in the real show, what are you doing? Sora, then? Is it actually Sora? Is this actually Kingdom Hearts or are you just making some Disney adventure sequence? And will it have Final Fantasy characters? Because if it doesn't, I'm gonna riot. It's one of the reasons I hated Kingdom Hearts 3. They got rid of all the Final Fantasy characters. That is the reason I was into Kingdom Hearts in the first place. It was Disney with Final Fantasy. How do you get better than that? I don't know. Well, you get worse, I'll tell you. And I'm gonna tell you that I'm done with this episode of Hot News. It's over, it's over. Thank you everybody for sticking with us. Thank you everybody who dealt with our hiatus yesterday. Uh, just protect the vulnerable, be with people. I love you, goodbye. <laughs>